Hey guys, welcome back to Brandon Does Barbecue. Today we're gonna do my favorite snack, beef jerky. Beef jerky is the ultimate on the go snack. It's a one handed finger food that is not easily perishable, it's full of protein, and it tastes great with the right marinade or the right driver. Now, if you've been living life under a rock and you have only experienced store-bought beef jerky, well, my friend, you are in for a treat because homemade knocks it out the park. So for this beef jerky, we have a London broiler. Now, typically when you are doing beef jerky, you want to go for the more leaner cuts. Fat beef jerky, no bueno. So we got this cut here. The first thing we're going to do is trim off the little bit of fat that's on the outside. Now, before you get into trimming and slicing, be sure to put the roast in the freezer for about 30 minutes. You want to make sure you get it nice and firm. It'll make it a lot easier to prep. So now this cut has a little bit of silver skin that's going to make for a really chewy bite so be sure to go ahead and get rid of it. So now we're going to go ahead and slice our roast up. Thickness wise it's really on preference if you want a more crispy bite go thinner. If you want a more meatier, chewy bite, go thicker. But generally, an eighth of an inch is pretty good to go to. Also, try to go against the grain. Some cuts, the grain kind of goes all over the place. It's okay if you can't. But like if you got something like a plank steak, always cut it great straight. So the grain is basically just looking for the muscle fiber line, seeing where they're going. So on this cut, it looks like it's going this way. So I'm going to cut that way. And the reason you want to do that is just going to make for a much more tender bite. Now, if you have any slices that have this fat band right here, just be sure to go ahead and cut that out because nobody wants a fatty cut of jerky. All right, so now it's time to make a marinade. Now, I don't really do a marinade. You can also do dry rubs. There are just so many variations. You can make it your own, but this is a very simple recipe. So we're gonna do half a cup of soy sauce, half a cup of Worcestershire, some barbecue sauce, I typically just go with a store-bought one rather than using the expensive craft stuff because once it goes in that marinade, you're just gonna get a little bit of hint of that. So don't need anything fancy. Sriracha for some heat, black pepper, crushed red pepper, also varying on heat how much you want to go, up to you, and then a little bit of garlic. Now it's time to get our jerky marinated. Now you could put the jerky in a bowl, put the marinade on top. You could get any of the marinating Tupperwares. I like those, but a big Ziploc bag. Dang it, screwed that up. Got a big Ziploc bag, does a trick as well. Now go ahead and try to get your meat evenly distributed throughout the marinade. Get as much air out of the bag as you can, then we're going to pop into the fridge overnight. Now for the sake of you not having to wait around for this to marinate, we already did a bag, so we'll be magic. Now, get yourself a nice cooling rack. You want something that you can put the jerky on that the smoke can go throughout. Get yourself a cookie sheet, so when you put the meat on there, you don't make a mess. Now just go ahead and put these on your cooling rack. Make sure you leave a little space in between each piece. Now once you get your jerky on the corn rack, go ahead and get yourself a paper towel and you're going to want to dab off all the residual marinade. And the reason you want to do that is the whole point of jerky is to extract 
all of the liquid and you're trying to dry it out. So this is just going to help speed that process up. Alright, so now it's time to pop these bad boys on the smoker. Alright, so now it's time to get our smoker fired up. Today we're going to use some Royal Oak All Natural briquettes. Get on a charcoal chimney, put a few tumbleweeds underneath, and get her going. Right to the room. Ain't gonna go any higher than that. These are a lifesaver. Kid you not. Look at Royal Oak tumbleweeds. They make lightning this thing so easy. One will normally do the trick, but two kind of speeds up the process, so that's what we're gonna do today. And walk away. Alright, so our charcoal chimney is ready to go in the firebox. My cue to dump it. Ah, damn, I said dump again. It sounds weird. So once your charcoal chimney has flames coming out the top, that's my cue to go ahead and empty it into the firebox. So, let's do it. Ooh, hot. Very hot. Now typically I would have the vents completely open. Anything where I'm going like 275 degrees, but with beef jerky, you want to keep it super low. I'm shooting for around 150 degrees. So we're going to dial the vents back and try to get that perfect temperature. Let's see what happens. <laughs> So our jerky's been on the smoker for about two hours. Now, you could go ahead and finish it out on the smoker, but we have a storm coming in. Thankfully, we have a dehydrator, so we're gonna transfer it to that. So, let's see how we're looking. Ooh, looking like jerky. So now we're gonna go ahead and transfer our jerky to our dehydrator. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can get them on Amazon, Bass Pro, Cabela's. They're pretty easy to get your hands on, so let's put it on. Now, a lot of that jerky still had a lot of moisture in it, so I'm thinking we're going to have to let it go for probably around four hours. It might take longer. You never know. Most dehydrators have a jerky setting. It's pretty easy. Just dial them out to that and let it roll. All right, so our jerky was on our dehydrator for about six hours. It's got a good pliable texture. It pulls apart easily. There's no moisture. It shows me it's ready. So, here's what it takes. Mmm. You got good smokiness. You get that nice saltiness from the soy sauce in the Worcestershire. Mmm. That's a delicious snack. 